Hey guys, Ryan here. First off, a massive thank you to those of you who commented back on my question on the community tab, which was just over one year in, are you has pro or has no? And uh, I think that's generated a lot of uh, commentary on the state of the franchise and it's really helped me affirm some of the things both for this video and the next. So without further ado, these are five reasons why Hasbro are a good fit for Power Rangers. Number five, action expertise. This one's the obvious one, we've been saying it ever since the acquisition. From Transformers through to Star Wars and Marvel, Hasbro know their action adventure figure toys. They know how to very effectively switch on audiences of all ages, from your early adopters through to your slightly obsessive collectors. And they definitely work that goldmine approach effectively. They appeal to different types of audiences with different types of release. We've seen that already with Power Rangers, from their Mega Mighties through to their slightly younger playset versions, through to the basic line and then the Lightning Collection. At the moment, I think we've definitely seen more so the Marvelization of Power Rangers, more so than, say, like the Transformersification or Star Warsization of it. What I mean is the Legends, the basic line figures, the uh, helmets, and their own Marvel roleplay stuff from the Avengers. They seem to be reflecting that with Power Rangers. That's obviously doing extremely well for them. And obviously, as we've said before, not having to pay a license fee for Power Rangers like they have to do for Marvel could be one of the motivating factors here. They get to keep a lot more of the profits from each sale. I expect that's probably what's getting them to tackle it in this way and it makes total sense. Also Transformers have obviously been Hasbro's bag for so long now and we're definitely starting to see more Megazord designs coming through. And unlike Bandai funneling everything through Zord Builder, Hasbro are definitely not taking that route. We're seeing multiple Megazords coming through simultaneously and none of them are the same. From the Dino Megazord, which is pretty cheap and affordable I suppose, uh, which you can either buy in separate sets or as a box set. Then we've got the outsourced Thunder Megazord, kind of obviously more collector focused. Then the Zeo Megazord, which has more of a focus on articulation and it has the uh, battle helmet gimmick, but obviously neither of those latter two transform. So very different takes, very different sizing, very different pricing. Hasbro are playing lots of angles here and I'm sure we're gonna get even more. Number four, Global Reach. Despite being a global brand, Bandai were never that great at getting every product everywhere. Hasbro, in comparison, are a juggernaut. They're like that runaway train from the city dream scene in Inception, the one that just plows through downtown. Everyone knows who they are, everyone knows at least some of their brands. They acquire Power Rangers and people have to listen, they're too big to ignore. While I haven't been able to get everything in my country, I have been able to get about 95% of it so far, and that's pretty good. It's actually kind of refreshing, especially after so much of Bandai America's output seemed to run exclusively in America, and exclusives were tethered to Toys R Us in America, which stopped international shipping at some point in 2016. Hasbro definitely has that global mentality. We've already seen them offering their exclusives out much more widely and for different companies in different countries. Dino Charge Black being a really good recent example, Target exclusive in America, Smith's Toys exclusive in the UK. I hear you though, people in countries like Australia, where so far there hasn't been a link made, despite also having Target. Number three, Vision. No, I don't mean the Avenger. What I mean is that Hasbro properties succeed. They just have so many household names under their control. And as covered in the recent Future of Power Rangers video I did, I believe they bought this brand to experiment with it, to break it, to change it, because financially they can take it. I believe they will disrupt, dismantle, and deconstruct the format that we've all been so accustomed to until they see growth. And that's obviously because Power Rangers was waning. It had kind of plateaued for years. Yeah, it does well, but it certainly hasn't been picking up steam. And I think the reception to the 2017 movie despite being favourable, just didn't garner enough interest and eyes on it. So Hasbro have kind of got to do something about that. And obviously that's quite a big challenge, but like I say, I think they've got the vision to do it. Already in both the TV show and the toy line, we're seeing signs of shakeups. 
and Clock Stomper referred to the Netflix Transformers series being a tonal step in the right direction for that franchise and hopefully an indicator for what Hasbro could do for Power Rangers. Number two, frequency. Hasbro are definitely able to, when they want to, really smother us in releases. Consider at the moment the absolute barrage of Lightning Collection figure releases we've been getting. The main Beast Morphers Season 2 lines kind of drifted off in 2020, but comparatively there's been seemingly no end of the collector grade figures. Last year we did get a couple one-offs outside of the main waves, but this year they've definitely been trying lots more options. From the first 5 pack in the Psychos, to the first figure with a vehicle in the Omega Ranger with the Uniforce Cycle, to the first figure being really overpriced for what you get and don't get in that they're charging you for a throne that isn't there in the Lord Draken Evo 3 figure. Oh whoops, sorry, this is supposed to be a positive video. Anyway, I like it. My wallet doesn't, but I guess the fast dopamine hit of having something new to track down makes up for it. It makes the Lightning Collection feel really broad in scope, at least in terms of the figures. For saying that they've got to this stage in just over one year, really impressive. Also the roleplay stuff has been pretty constant too, we've had two helmets, a dragon dagger, a morpher, yes three of the four of them did have Bandai legacy equivalents, but it took Bandai a great deal longer to cover that ground, whereas Hasbro seemed to just be sprinting clear down the field. Collectors are seemingly the Power Ranger focus right now, and why wouldn't we be? They can ship less and charge more. But it is nice to see the history of the brand getting its due and concentrating on both a familiar, but also really unpredictable release schedule. And number one, Unity. This is something that I think is really easy to lose scope of, but something that we really need to acknowledge and kind of keep at the forefront of our minds. That being that this era is the first time in history that Power Rangers has been owned completely by one company. That definitely has to open a lot of doors in terms of linking things much more closely than we've ever seen before. If you think Power Rangers always had Bandai as the toy manufacturer and Saban, Disney, Saban as the production side, now it's all Hasbro. And of course compare that with some of Hasbro's other properties, Marvel that we've already mentioned and Star Wars owned by Disney. So they get much less of a say in the toy line than they do here. Now you could argue that they are still following the Japanese Sentai for the most part, and yes that's true, at least for now, but definitely and Beast Morphers has shown us this, they can inject new things when they want to. Now Bandai and Saban had kind of fallen into a bit of a repetitive approach for this, you know the kind of cockpit armour suits and the occasional weapon as well, which seems to be all Hasbro have attempted at copycatting so far in a couple new exclusive weapons. But then next up we've got Dino Fury and you just don't know what Hasbro are going to do there. Now they've had a bit more practice at it and kind of know what to expect themselves. They can basically fully integrate any ideas they want to. They kept things pretty gentle in Beast Morphers, a few new weapons and quite a few old ones as well, but nothing too out there. Imagine though if they really went for it, say in Dino Fury. The integration they have in being one company rather than two in a long term arrangement definitely gives them so much more freedom and plenty of chance to do surprises properly in a way that fits both the toy line and the TV show in more harmony than maybe we got in previous eras. I'm thinking of say that Wild Force rider bike from the Forever Red special, um, which allegedly Bandai requested be in the show, but it was shoehorned in in such a way that I hope Hasbro won't do. It's having that reasoning and being able to put things in properly, and that's what I'm really hoping that this new arrangement will reveal. Now admittedly, Boom Studios comics are their own separate thing at the moment, but equally Hasbro seem to be happily adapting stuff that comes out of that. So as long as they keep creating buzz for the franchise, I'm sure Hasbro will be quite happy to just let them do their own thing. Obviously early days yet, but I do hope as we continue to go on, we'll get a more cohesive fusion than ever before. I guess we'll find out soon. So in summary, you've got a company that are a truly global name with a lot of momentum behind them, taking inspiration from their own similar brands which have already had tried and tested distribution models for them to mimic, and certainly a lot of drive and financial impetus in making their latest acquisitions succeed, possibly being another crown jewel of the Hasbro empire. 
Power Rangers has now got a great and often surprising release schedule and the ability to offer really exciting and different experiences by virtue of keeping both sides of production tied together. So that's why I think Hasbro are a good fit for Power Rangers. Do you agree? Do you think there's anything I've missed? Let me know in the comments. So join me for the next one where you knew I was going to do this. We're going to talk about five reasons why Hasbro might not be the best thing that's ever happened to Power Rangers. Obviously, I like to let you make your own minds up. Have a look on my Instagram at Power Rangergram where it seems like lightning is striking all the time at the moment, at least in terms of the lightning collection. And until that next video, see you later.